Welcome. This video is going to be on showing all the game mechanics and attributes of Cyberpunk 2077 for the first time player. If you want to see more advanced gameplay, go to my Grim Reaper videos. Always choose regular start and when you do that then you can pick your difficulty level which you can change later at any time. And then you're going to pick one of the three tribes that you want to belong to. So read all of the descriptions for that tribe and then pick one. The gameplay will be essentially the same for each. Then you're going to go into the character creator and you can adjust the way V looks. Male, female, whatever. And then you're going to pick how many attribute points you want to put into each of the five skill trees. Since you need to have four in any of the skill trees to invest the first level of perks, put four in each. So after completing the mandatory Sandra Dorset mission, you show up in V's apartment. In the apartment, you can go to the wardrobe and stand to the side and acquire all of V's clothing that you can sell or disassemble for components. You can also go into the stash room shown here and transfer all of the guns and clothing in V's stash into your inventory so you can disassemble them or sell them. When you press the key for the map you get this top line where it's cyberware, inventory, map, character, and journal. You want to explore all those areas. In inventory it's going to show your character and on the right side it's going to show the clothing and you're going to click on each of the clothing items. Four of those items are going to have special features that boost and benefit you. The rest of them won't. So look for things that benefit you and install them because the look that you're going to have is dictated by what you do in wardrobe. So when you go over and stand in front of V's closet, it opens the wardrobe up. You have to click on it and then you can install everything that you own or have owned. Anything you disassemble will still be in your inventory and you can put it on. But in the beginning of the game you hardly have any clothes. As the game progresses you pick up clothing all over the place and when you disassemble it, it still is in your inventory for wardrobe, so you can put it on. So when you click on the map and you go to inventory, your weapon slots are going to be up there. And when you click on one of the weapon slots, it's going to show you all the available guns. And if you click over to melee, it's going to show you all your available melee weapons. And you can swap them at any time. This way you can try different weapons that you have in your inventory and decide which ones you like to use. So to find things you're looking for effectively using the map, you can zoom in and zoom out. We're looking at Watson here where you start the game and you can't leave. And if you go to the filter that's custom, you can click on and off each one of the items. And if you're just looking for gigs, you can click off everything except for gigs and they'll show up much easier for you. The little blue clasped hand symbol is the fixer in the area, and that's Regina Jones. And if you cover over it, you can tell how many gigs she's offering and how many you've completed. So in Cyberpunk, there are four main things that you're going to choose to do that are going to change the way you play the game. And one of them is to acquire money so you can buy cyberware, get crafting specs for grenades and weapons. Two get components to upgrade your cyberware and your iconic weapons. Three, choose different cyberware that you're going to buy and put in. And four, you're going to invest your attribute points that you get when you level up into the different skill trees. Cyberpunk gives you all kinds of freedom. It may appear that you're supposed to do something and if you don't do it there'll be some problem, but actually if you have control of your character and you're out in the world, you can choose to do a mission or choose not to do a mission. Even though they'll put a yellow line and guide you to where you're supposed to go for the next mission, that doesn't mean you have to go there. When you open up the map, at the top, next to the map, there's inventory, and then you can go to backpack and open that up. And at the top, under filters, you can see there's guns and melee weapons and clothing, etc. These are all the things that are in your inventory that you can use. So if we go all the way to the right to journal, we can learn some things. The yellow is the jobs that you have, the green is the gigs for the fixers, and the red is the completed missions that you've done. But it only does story missions and gigs, it doesn't do NCPD missions. 
So if we look at the jobs to do and we click on the information, it'll highlight the job on the map. So when we open up the map, it'll show the yellow line to where to go. And if we open the map, we can see it's going to end up at this destination. But if we click on something else, then it doesn't highlight that spot anymore, and on the map, it's gone. Next up, let's talk components. You're going to need a ton of white components, and you're going to get them from disassembling trash items, as shown here. There's a key you're going to press that's going to disassemble them, or you can disassemble white Tier 1 guns. Each white piece of clothing will disassemble for one Tier 1 item. So I'm going to disassemble all the clothes that I'm not going to wear because I'd rather get the components. The only way to buy Tier 1 components is to go to a trash dealer and pay $200 each. Or you can go to the Slotomatic machines and buy the guns and disassemble them and they cost $100 for one Tier 1 component. But if you only need 20 of them and you have $2,000, that's something you can do. Walking the streets and scanning for junk items is a good way to learn what the different districts in Night City are like. So now we're going to talk about exploring Night City. There are three ways to get around. You can run and walk to where you want to go. You can call your vehicle, get on it, and drive to where you want to go. And you can fast travel to where you want to go. The little blue markers for fast travel locations won't show up until you get near them and, and they'll be highlighted and you can use them after that point. When standing in front of the fast travel point, you can click select destination, but it won't show you the NCPD missions unless you highlight them. So now let's talk about crafting. If you open up your inventory and backpack, you'll be able to see how many components you have. If you go down to crafting and go to the green components and craft all of them except for four, and you're going to want to leave at least four, which is 20 white components behind, so you can craft bullets. And then craft all of those up into blue components and leave some behind. And then you can craft them up to purple components if you're not at a level where you can acquire purple components yet. You can also craft the weapons that you have in inventory if you have the components. And you can buy crafting specs for weapons at the gun stores and add to your inventory. In Cyberpunk, you can skip time. And skipping time is going to be very useful. If the gun store doesn't have the gun you want, you can skip time and then he will. You can get mods that he doesn't have at the time by skipping time. And you can go into Lizzie's bar if it's too early in the day by skipping time to a later time in the day. Making game saves allows you to go back and take a different route than you did or correct mistakes. And then there's quick saves that should be done before you do any NCPD mission or gig so you don't have to come from all the way across town to get to the same point in case you die. So next we're going to discuss what you can choose to do in Watson. Uh, Cyberpunk doesn't force you to do anything, so if you have control of your character, you can do whatever you want. The only four things you can do is one, the main storyline leading up to the Relic Heist, two, doing NCPD gigs and killing the gangers, and you can collect money and guns from the gangers, three, doing fixer gigs for the fixer, Regina Jones, which you're going to get more money, and it's going to give you more experience, about 1170 XP per fixer gig, whereas it's about 370 XP for the NCPD gigs. And four, you can farm gangers, in which case it's going to go, your level is going to go up the least for the amount of gangers you kill, and you're going to collect the most amount of guns, and therefore convert into components. What I enjoy is close quarters combat at the most OP I can be at the lowest level possible. So this is a level 35 character, and I'm just blowing everything up with it. And it's a lot of fun. Anyway, your um, goal may be different. Maybe you want to be a net runner who sits up on the roof and quick hacks everybody and doesn't get involved in close quarters combat. So it's going to be different according to what your game build is. If you want to see what different game builds are, you can go on YouTube and look at somebody's game build, and then you can do a 
game save, go to the Ripper, remove the cyberware that's necessary, and respec your attribute tree to whatever they recommend, and install the perks they recommend, and give it a try. You know, maybe at level 20 you can give it a try, and if you like the way it works, then you can stick with that game build, or you can go back to your game save and undo it all and try a different build. And you can do that at any level, but if you do it and you go up 10 levels, then you'd have to sacrifice the 10 levels that you went up by doing by reverting back to your game set. So the next thing we're going to discuss is cyberware. Cyberware will give you all kinds of special bonuses that you won't get without it, like self-ice up there that keeps netrunners from being able to hack you. So your cyberware on the left side in yellow shows your cyberware capacity. The red zone above the yellow is because I have Edge Runner that gives you 50 extra cyberware capacity points, which allows me to put a lot more cyberware in than I would have if I didn't have it. On the right side in blue, you have your armor level, and that's going to decrease the amount of damage you take from enemy bullets. There are some significant bonuses you can get from putting perks in when your uh, cyberware capacity tree is completely populated. So when you open the map and go to character up top, you get the skill tree, which is body, reflexes, technical, cool, and intelligence. And if you hover over each one, it'll tell you what the benefits of putting points into that skill tree are. And if you open them up, you have the option of putting perk points in and your perk choices aren't permanent. You can take them out and put them somewhere else anytime you like, which is very nice. In all video games, I try to upgrade my health first because it helps in survivability more than having better guns or something else. The cyborg perk gives you a 15% cooldown reduction for all cyberware. And the extended warranty gives you a 15% extension for the cyberware. Great. As you can see, I'm heavily invested into the technical skill. And I have all three trees pretty much maxed out and used. The most difficult thing you're going to find is that you just don't have enough perk points. And you're going to have to go around the world and get the 10 free available perk points that are in the world and progress your progression rewards shown here we're at level 35 in every single category you get a free perk point and at level 15 you get a free perk point that's an extra 10 perk points so now i'm going to discuss tactics that work in the early game so i'm using reboot optics with the cyber deck which stops them from moving and it also stops them from shooting at me and if I put the reboot optic so it comes up first on the list, I can just open up the scanner and hit the F and it's already on. The second guy didn't get it, by the way. <laughs> the shotgun is a green Satara DB2 that was crafted from the crafting specs in your inventory when you start the game. And here is the stats and cyberware and the character perk tree investment. At level 5. The hardest thing you're going to come across is the random combat when Maelstrom chases you down at level 5 and they have a Sand of Vistan user that's going to attack you with Manus Blades. If you only have 4 in Intelligence, you're not going to be able to hack data terminals on the wall, the black boxes, but you will be able to hack these yellow boxes that are on poles. You want to get the two lower lines of code. The upper one you don't care about, but you only have five buffer slots, so getting the two lower lines is important. And if you have an overlap of, of items, then it's much easier. Here I'm going to get a quick hack overheat, plus the crafting component. So have fun exploring Night City and enjoying all of the storyline, because it's a wonderful storyline. And I hope you do well playing the game.